All right, so this video is for you guys that love those two strokes. I picked this thing up and uh, head gasket was blown. I'm gonna tear this down, take the head off, show you guys how to do that, and uh, yeah, we're we're going to town on this thing. This thing's getting stripped way down. So uh, have a seat, sit back, and enjoy the show. All right, so the first thing I like to do whenever I'm checking out a motor is pull a spark plug. Because the spark plug, that's going to tell you everything. It tells you how it burns, tells you if there's any fuel in there. We're going to take a look at this. I got a funny feeling there's probably coolant in there. Uh, we can see that. It's wet. Um, there's oil in there. You can smell it. Uh, smell if there's any fuel. Uh, this looks, well, a little like oil. Shine the light down the cylinder. That was wet. That's good. It's a good sign that there's no coolant in there. So, what I'm going to do, I already got the carb off, is I'm just going to pull the jug off from the bottom, the base. I'm going to pull them four nuts off, slide the whole thing out, and I'm going to test it with the head on to see if the head is what's actually leaking. Uh, that I want to find out. And then I'll be able to get a glimpse of the piston right away. So that'll be next. So what I'm going to do, and uh, it's in tight quarters, so you're not going to be able to see it with the camera, is uh, I'm going to take uh, the ground strap off, these bolts off, that mounting bracket off, take my carb boot off, and don't forget to unscrew your oil injector, which is right here, a 10 millimeter bolt that'll come off. Loosen my hoses, my hose clamps. Take those four nuts off around the perimeter and my upper hose, and I'm going to slide that right up. When I get to that point, I'll start videotaping again, but this is something I can't really videotape because my hands would just be in the way. So I thought I'd show you uh, what I'm going to do and uh, show you my next step after. Alright, so the jug's all ready to pull. I got those four nuts off of there. I got everything disconnected. I got my uh, hoses disconnected. Now well, let's see what we got. And when you do this, uh, try not to bust this thing off for your temperature sensor. Alright, pulling that straight up and out. Cylinder looks good. No issues there. Uh, my next test is uh, I want to see if there's any coolant in the bottom of the engine. Let's see uh, a lot of fuel and oil. So I'm wondering if it wasn't a. Uh, I'm wondering if it wasn't a cooling issue. I'm wondering if ooh, the gas was uh, flooding into the engine. So I'm going to take a closer look. The camera's not really showing anything, but kind of see what's going on. Piston's got a little scoring on it, but not bad. It's still usable. I'm going to take a closer peek and I'll uh, let you guys know what I find out. All right, so I'm going to show you one little test I did. Um, put a hose clamp, just kind of uh, cut this uh, this off, put a hose on it, just clamp the, the hose in half so nothing drains out. And uh, grab my bucket down here with the coolant in it, and I put it in this spout right here. The head is upside down, and I have coolant flowing through the jug right now. If you look at the base, there is not one single drop of coolant. Um, so that tells me that uh, that wasn't the issue. It's not leaking. 
So either I got a, a radiator issue that, uh, that it was overheating and uh, spitting out the um, the little puke tank hole because I got a yeah, I got a crack in mine somewhere <laughs> leaking out somewhere just when it overheated it shot oh here it is here's the crack shut out that crack and I didn't have any coolant left in the uh, the radiator so I thought it dumped into the engine so looks like I might be replacing that radiator but uh, so far what I can see, you can see this coolant in there, it's all the way through the jug. Not a drop at the bottom, it means that's sealing good. So that means I, I did it correctly. So I guess I'll throw the jug back on, try firing it up and see what happens. Alright, so now I inspected the, the jug and the, the piston, everything looks good. So now I'm going to put the jug back on the engine. Um, put a new gasket on. Now when you put the jug back on your uh, piston rings, your pistons have little stoppers in it here and here for your rings so they don't move around. So you don't want, you want to make sure that they are lined up otherwise you'll destroy your jug. So when you put the jug back on you squeeze these back in, make sure it's lined up, do both and then slide the jug on. So, they make a um, um, piston ring squeezer that uh, you can buy, but I can do this by hand. I'll, I'll show you how I do it. So I put a little oil inside the, the jug just to make the slide on a little better. So much easier without all this other stuff in the way. Alright. That's sliding down. Get your uh, hose ready. Got my exhaust spring stuck in my way here. Line up your hose as you're pushing the head down. There we go, a little bit of a trick. And I can put my uh, nuts back on. So this one down here is a bit of a trick. And you want to tighten them down in a crisscross pattern. So what I do for this one down here, because it's such tight quarters, is I've got a extension with a bevel edge, and this thing actually will rock on it. So I put that on, and I can get in there and tighten it. So I'm on this one, give her a couple good wraps, she's tight. I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the boot on, hook up my oil injector and my hoses, and then uh, I'm going to clean the carb, the uh, I had a five five month old gas in this thing. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's already crusty along here. Um, just five months. I'm just kind of shocked how crusty and crappy everything got. Um, so I guess uh, don't use uh, gasoline with ethanol in it. Um, if you do, make sure you put stable on the gas, which I didn't do. So I'm going to start using premium gas, no ethanol in it.
And that'll probably save uh, save the headache of having to tear this apart. All right, so I'm gonna put the car boot back on. Let's see. Real bad. And don't forget to put this guy back in. Make sure you put your ground strap on when you put your motor mount on or uh, it won't run correctly. It's the ground for everything. I've uh, actually bought an ATVs that the guy couldn't figure out why it ran like crap. And uh, here the ground strap was broken. All I did was put a new ground strap on and fire it up, she's good to go. Little things like that get overlooked every day. If you don't know what you're looking for. Alright, so it's installed. I'm going to hook up my uh, oil injector line. 10 millimeter. Definitely don't want to forget that. <clears throat> or you're not going to have any oil. <laughs> Make sure it's cleaned out. Don't forget your little temperature sensor thing that gets hooked up here. That'll tell your fan to go on. Those go bad, so you might want to consider replacing that if your fan's not working. And I just gotta hook up my hoses here, clean the carb, and then uh, I'll go fire it up. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention while I'm uh, filling up the radiator is there's a air bleeder screw on the top of the head, 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna fill it up with uh, coolant Listen for the air to rush out, wait for a little coolant to come out of here. Once it starts coming out, I'm going to tighten it up and then all the air will be out. I'm going to start filling it up and see what happens. Ha! Forgot my bottom hose. Like I said, don't forget your your bottom hose right here. <coughs> I missed that. Kind of in a hurry trying to show you guys what to do here. And when you're in a hurry, that's when you screw things up. If you can hear the air rushing out. Yep, now it's starting to dribble up. I'm going to tighten that up. Now if you uh, forget to do that, you're going to have overheating issues because you've got air trapped in your coolant lines. There we go. So I got everything all back together. Uh, my battery's dead so I got to pull start it. So I might take a couple cranks to get this thing to fire up and we'll see how it does. Alright, so let's give her a shot, got her all back together. 
Uh, my battery's dead, so I got jumper cables going to the battery. Fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so before when you heard me start up the engine, I don't know if you heard something rattling around. Ooh, look at that. So the recoil broke, and uh, this little lever that connects onto here broke off, and I also cracked the pan. So it sounded like it was in the engine, but here it was just the, uh, the pull start cover. So this thing shot. You can see it's broken. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. So it's not the engine that's bad, it's this. So until I get one, Right now I'm just going to put it back together because it's winter in Wisconsin and uh, I need this thing for plowing. So I sold my last one already. So, so there's the issue. So you ever hear any rattling around in your engine, don't think it's necessarily the piston. Could be your recoil, could be whatever this was flopping around in your flywheel. And that's it. Today I got my helper, my son. He wanted to help out with the four-wheel, which I think is awesome. He's seven years old. Smile and wave to the camera, Logan. <laughs> All right, go ahead. He wants to finish putting the cover back on. See, this is so easy. Even a seven-year-old can do it. A little bit more on that one, buddy. I think it slid off. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, you want to start on the nut first. Make sure you're all the way on and then hit the trigger. Like that. Now you're on the nut. Now hit it. There you go. Good. I'll do the next one. There you go. Perfect. And one last one, I think. We're not on yet. There, go ahead, give her. Ooh, perfect. And there you have it. The recoil cover up. All right, so I got her all back together. Uh, tune the carb. I'll show you how she runs. Key on. I just got to put the clutch on and she'll be ready to go. Voila, there we have it. It's all back together, all running good. Um, like I said, transmission, top end inspection, new swing arm, tighten the chain. Just got to reupholster the seat, that's what I'm waiting on. And uh, button up the rest, and she's going to be ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my uh, channel. I have uh, tons of Polaris uh, repairs on there. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching.